Very first science demonstration I ever remember seeing. It was done by my father. All right, watch this. Two colorless liquids mixed together, but not for long. Don't take your eyes off of it. Look at this. Bam. That's not even the best part here. Watch this. Watch as it comes in here goes back again. So let me show you how we did the whole thing. Of course, it's not just water that was sitting there. And this over here, we have some starch and we have some um, sodium bisulfite. So that's sitting over here. And in this container over here, we have some potassium iodate. So really it is, this is this great reaction between iodate being um, oxidized and going into iodide and iodide going to iodine and that being reduced back again. And you get this competition. So it's this invisible kind of competition in the molecules that I think is amazing. So here, watch. I'll mix it one time. There you go, that's a good mix. Watch it when it sits right there. As soon as the bisulfite is used up, then of course we get to see the iodine and that uh, is visible when there's starch and it looks like this. That is truly amazing. This was my moment of wonder. This is the moment in time where I went, whoa, what is this thing called chemistry? Einstein had a moment of wonder, they say. He wrote that uh, he was fascinated by a compass and, uh, and how the needle moved with these invisible lines of force that somehow uh, were controlled by the Earth's magnetism. It was that moment of wonder that got him to think and to ask more questions and started his curiosity. There's a new series about Albert Einstein and his life outside of traditional science, a kind of a cool glimpse into his mind, called Genius, done by National Geographic, with whom I teamed up to make this video. The people at National Geographic wanted me to talk about how I got interested in science, what I'm doing now to try to get people excited about uh, science, technology, engineering, and math, and what were those moments of wonder that made all the difference. This was my first show and tell when I was in kindergarten. Now everybody else had trucks and G.I. Joe and dolls and whatever else. I had a Cartesian diver because mom and dad were a little nerdy. But this was cool, dad taught me how to do it. There's an eyedropper inside this bottle and you can use the power of your mind to cause it to go down and you can make it move up again. <laughs> I'm just squeezing the bottle. So, but if you squeeze the bottle in a Cartesian diver, look, you can see right here, it forces the water up, you compress the air and it increases the uh, density, right? And so it will sink and float. But my dad taught me the value of presentation. He said, you get somebody to come up and test if their finger is magnetic. And you put your finger here like this, and if it's magnetic, then of course I would secretly squeeze and it would go down, and then you'd pull it away and it would go back up again, which is fantastic. Or I always love this one, pull a hair, pull the hair around, and you could pull the hair down like this. Well, I did that presentation with the, uh, the magnetic finger, but I did it out on the playground uh, and charged everybody a quarter. So they'd line up and they'd put their finger here, and if I liked them, then I made their finger magnetic, and if I didn't, well, it just kind of stayed at the top. Didn't matter, I made $3.75 that day. That got refunded the next day because my parents said that that was scamming people, but I learned the value of presentation. Subconsciously, I guess I knew I was going to be a teacher clear back when I was five years old. I just didn't think that I would be this kind of teacher. I, I was so fortunate to be able to have as a great mentor my high school chemistry teacher. I convinced him to allow me to be able to go and develop a science demonstration show where you would go from school to school and do these little science demonstrations. I actually met my wife doing these science demonstrations and it, it's amazing to go back and to see some of the pictures uh, of the same stuff, things uh, blowing up and big balls of fire <laughs> and uh, chemical color changes and those kinds of things. and. Uh, Doug Hodes was that champion for me, the guy that I could always go back to, and he would just remind me that my I really needed to be a teacher and to be in that role. So here I am fresh out of, uh, of uh, college. I'm going to teach, and the next thing you know, I, I get teamed up with television, uh, with NBC television doing a show called News this for is Kids. floating ping pong ball. This rising piece of paper and this floating beach ball have in common. I realized in that moment that my classroom just got bigger, that the walls went down, and I was actually able to do things and to, uh, to, to share things on television to get people excited. And uh, so I did television and teaching at the same time while still out doing programs for kids, just immersing myself in any way to find the most creative ways to make science fun. That really was the passion, was to find the most creative ways to make science fun, whether that's doing 
doing that on YouTube or it's doing it on traditional television or doing it on talk shows with uh, someone like Ellen DeGeneres. I'll latch on to anybody I can find to be able to share that passion, share that message. And I think that it's so important to go back and to find that single moment of wonder that started the whole thing. I think that we have to go back and find that moment of wonder in all of our ourselves and to be able to share that moment of wonder and create those unforgettable learning experiences for, um, I don't know, maybe the next Einstein that's sitting in their classroom. After doing science demonstrations and being consumed in this for the last 25 years, people often ask, do you ever see a demonstration that still makes you go, wow, or something new, or blows your mind? This is one of those demonstrations that I love that we call Twist in Time. Uh, let me show you what the setup is. Uh, everything is right here. I have an empty one here. There is an outside container. Think of like two beakers, one inside the other. So there's an outside container, and then there's this inside cylinder. Uh, it sits in a little groove, and now I can spin the crank, and it twists that inside container that you can kind of see here. So whatever liquid you put in between, this is a way to be able to mix that liquid. And the liquid that we're choosing is corn syrup. So uh, in order to see it when I'm spinning it, I've taken the corn syrup and put some food coloring in it. So now I'm going to make a dot right here in the very center. So let me twist it a little bit just so I can kind of see what I'm doing. So this is going to go down here like this. Let me see if I can just put this little dot in place. Good. Excellent. And there it is. All right. So there is our little dot. Now, if I turn the crank, it's going to mix the liquid up. And so that's what I want you to see. So watch what happens when I turn the crank like this. You can see it starts to mix up that dot that's there. And so you can see that now we've kind of uh, mixed it up and we've kind of torn it apart. And this is what it looks like when it's all kind of mixed up. Let's say that dot represented uh, that first moment of wonder that you had, that first experiment that you saw, something that was really cool that triggered you, that got you to where you are today. What if you could go back in time and reconstruct that and bring it back so that you could see that one moment of wonder? Well, it means that you'd have to twist time backwards. And so I cranked it this way. Now let's go backwards. So watch what happens. We're now going to just turn the crank backwards like this. Watch what happens. I promise you there's no camera trick. I promise you we're not uh, doing anything funny with the uh, photography. Watch what happens when we bring it back around again, twist it exactly the same way it was. Look at this. It work. The dot comes back exactly the way it was in the beginning. I promise you no camera tricks. I'll show you how to do it. This is one of those things that just blew my mind. Uh, the, the secret here, the science behind here is laminar flow. Uh, laminated sheet, right, uh, of plywood, for example. I want you to think of parallel layers of just sticky liquid. When I start to turn it like this, though, that, those layers start to pull apart, but they stay, the dye stays in its layer. And so as it moves around, um, it now pulls it apart, but it stays in that layer. So they would say that the flow is laminar instead of being turbulent, right? Um, from even a higher physics level, uh, Dr. Uh, Kevin Cahill from the University of New Mexico Department of Physics and, and Astronomy pointed out that the Reynolds number has to be under one, which makes it just a, a great uh, example of how laminar flow works and how beautiful to be able to kind of spin it backwards and see how this works. Now you can let it sit there for a while. Um, I'm just being very careful and trying not to, uh, to mix it up more than just the turn that you see here. I'm looking at it moving down and you can kind of see those layers. It looks like it's spinning back around again. Let's see if we can take it back to that original spot. Bam, and there it is. I just wanted you to be able to look at this and realize that it's that moment of wonder and that moment in time. That's what we should be focusing on in science education. If we want to inspire the next generation of scientists and engineers, I think we all have to kind of go back and see where was that moment, what time in our life, how was that constructed, and how do we create and recreate those unforgettable experiences for this next generation of scientists and engineers. This episode of The Spangler Effect was supported by the show Genius on National Geographic. New episodes air on Tuesday nights, 9, 8 central. If you miss anything, you can always go on demand, natgeotv.com. 
Huge thanks to National Geographic for supporting me. Thank you for watching. And as always, share your comments below. I want to know that moment of wonder that got you excited about science and where you are today.